Hey there, this is Arthur Hill, Senior Technical Analyst with StockCharts.com. Today we're going to talk about Sharp Charts and Chart Attributes, Part 1. We're going to go over the different date and range settings. We'll show you the different price types and how to use those. We'll go over the size and color options available on Sharp Charts. And then we'll look at grids, legends, and much, much more. The chart attributes section can be found just below the sharp chart. Here we can see chart attributes and just below that you can select your period. It's currently on daily but you can do anything from quarterly all the way to one minute. I'm going to leave it at daily. For predefined range there are a number of settings that you can choose from here all the way to 100 years depending on your membership level. I'm going to put that at six months. And then you can see on the right, I can do years and days, and I can also add extra bars, and that would put some blank space at the end of the chart. So I'm just going to put five there. And when I'm done with these settings, I click update, and I will get my new chart settings. And there you can see I've got six months with five extra bars on the right side. So I've got a one year bar chart and I want to show you how the fill the chart selection works for the range. Say if I change my chart type to candle volume and I've got one year and I click update. When I get that chart you can see that these candlesticks are quite scrunched together. And if I go down and I select the fill the chart options it'll put as many candlesticks on that chart as are needed to fill the chart and make it readable. So you can see here I've got a completely different chart. So it automatically adjusts the number of price bars or candlesticks on your chart to fit that chart size. Charters can also activate a date slider to go through prices for their analysis. So here if I go to the range drop down and at the bottom I click select start and end date. And I'll automatically get one year there. And if you look on the right side, there we have a slider. And I can click and hold that slider and drag it to the left or the right to move that price date range on the chart. And if I want to see how this particular symbol QQQ reacted to the 200 day moving average in the past, it's very easy to do. You can also expand or contract the slider by clicking, holding, and dragging one side. So here I've expanded the slider in the date range and I can click and I can contract that slider and the date range as well. There's also an option to put spaces between your price bars or candlesticks. So here on this chart you can see down we have fill the chart and I've got gap at zero. And that's the gap between the price bars or candlesticks. So if I change this gap to five and click update, you're going to see that we're going to get gaps in between those candlesticks now. Also in the chart attributes section, you can change the chart type. And we have a wide array of chart types available. Very easy to change back and forth. We have histogram, we have equivolume, candle volume, Kagi, Renko, and so on. I'm just going to change this to a candlestick chart and you can see I still got fill the chart. Click update when you've made those changes to see your new chart. Now while we're on the price bars here and I've got the black candlesticks on the chart, I want to show you how the up and down colors work. So currently the up and down colors are both the same. But here, say if I want the up candlesticks to be green, I can do that. And if I want the down candlesticks to be red, I can change that color there. And when you're finished, click update. And so now I can see that every day that was an up close, when the price from the prior close was higher, you get a green candlestick. And when the price was below the prior close, you get a red candlestick. So it's easy to see when you had an up day or a down day. It's also really easy to change the size of your chart. We have a nice drop down there with a bunch of predefined sizes. You can also put a custom size in. So if I wanted a 900 by 500 chart, I could enter 500 and click update to see that chart. 
Right next to the size drop down menu, you have the color schemes, and we have a number of predefined color schemes that you can choose from. So check those out and find out which one is your favorite. I'm going to choose a night here, and that gives me a black background with red and white candlesticks. Now I've got here a basic bar chart with black bars. I've got a green five period moving average and a red 50 period moving average. And if I want to focus more on the moving averages, I can change the opacity of the price bars to make them transparent. So here I take opacity and if I move it down to 0.3 and then I click update, you can see that those are more transparent and in the background, and now the moving averages are more prevalent on the chart. So this chart does not have a grid, but of course we can add a grid and there are different options for the grid. If you scroll down, you can see the grid is off, but I can change to any one of these options. I'm just gonna click a normal grid and click update when you are ready. And there you can see it's now easy to see where 172 and a half is using that grid. So I've changed the chart to Google or Alphabet. And you can see we don't have any information up here on the levels for the two moving averages. And I don't know what indicator is down here. And we can change that by using the options for the legend. So currently the legends option is off but I can change that to default if I wanna see the values in more detail. So you can see now I've got the symbol and I've got the levels for the moving averages and I've got the indicator as well as the levels for the indicator. If you want even more details, you can choose verbose for your legend option there, which I've done here. And if you'll notice here in the price indicators, I've put dollar sector and dollar industry. And when I select verbose for my legends here, you can see that in the chart, I get the sector, communications services, and the industry group, internet. And that concludes part one of chart attributes. Be sure to tune into part two where we'll cover a number of items shown on this chart. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Have a great day.